I've said it once. I've definitely said it twice. Heck, let's be real. I've said it a bunch of times, especially on the Anatomy of the Climb videos. Here's a good reason to train your lower traps. And yet, we don't have a video for you about the lower trap. Well, not anymore. It's time to get low and trap ourselves. What? <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. <laughs> yes, it does. Just go with it. In this video, we will cover the function of the lower trap from both a biomechanical and climbing perspective. We will also provide two basic tests you can do yourself to see if strengthening the lower traps is something you need to be concerned about in the first place. And finally, we'll talk about how to properly train the lower trap on and off the wall. So let's get to it. Essentially, the lower trap helps with everything. Its most important role is when the shoulder is overhead, but it does play a role throughout our range of motion. It is helpful when pulling hard in the cave or when reaching way right above you for that next hold. It's even helpful when dynoing to that glory jug at the end of your project. If you haven't watched our Anatomy of the Climb series, definitely check it out. You'll notice the lower trap comes up as a topic of discussion in basically every video. To better understand how it specifically helps with our climbing, let's check out its biomechanical function. The lower trapezius helps with upward rotation of the scapula. So as we raise our arm up, the scapula has to move with it. The lower trapezius helps create the rotation we need so that the humerus and the scapula maintain good position with one another. The lower trap is also a stabilizer for the shoulder during the initial elevation of the arm. See, when you first begin to lift your arm, like the deltoids engage in creative force, this creates a actual downward rotation of the scapula. The lower trapezius helps fight that downward rotation, countering it with a stabilizing upward rotational force. I mentioned that the lower trap helps with upward elevation of the scapula, but so does the serratus anterior muscle. The serratus anterior muscle though creates shoulder protraction. If this went unchecked, it would cause poor biomechanics, aka it could set you up for an injury. The lower traps helps combat this protraction by retracting the shoulder blade. Hashtag balance. Finally, the lower traps have also been shown to be most active in about the 90 to I guess about 180 degree range of motion of the shoulder. Since this is the most common position for our arms to be in climbing, you can probably see for yourself why having strong lower traps is beneficial. So all that anatomy stuff is great, but what actually happens to you as a climber if you have weak lower traps? Well, this can lead to issues with rotator cuff pathologies, impingements, or as bad as a labral tear or other complications. Not everyone with weak lower traps will suffer all those things. They are just possibilities. In general, I think it's a great idea for pretty much everyone to include some lower trap strengthening into their training program. But if you'd like a more definitive answer on whether or not you have weak lower traps, you're in luck. I've got two different tests for you coming right up. In an article titled, A New Manual Muscle Test for Assessing the Entire Trapezius Muscle, researchers found a new, valid, and reliable test for the lower trap that doesn't really require you to be an expert to administer. Here's how you do it. Place the shoulder in 110 degrees of abduction. Have your buddy place one of their hands on the medial border of the scapula or shoulder blade at the bottom or inferior angle of the scapula. Next, have them place their other hand on the mid to forearm of the arm that you're testing. Have them create moderate pressure at the mid forearm for five seconds. While in this position, have your buddy monitor for any movement of the scapula. If it moves medially or inwards towards the spine, that would suggest that the trap was not holding its upwardly rotated position, which can be an indication of weakness. Now, there are sources of error in this test. The harder you push on the forearm, the more likely you are to get a positive test, so only push with moderate pressure to produce a more accurate result. 
Now, for those of you who don't have any friends, here's a different test you can do. <laughs> that's the test you would have to do. That's, uh, uh, that's true. Disclaimer with this test. The prior one we talked about is actually backed by science and is researched. This test, on the other hand, is simply a functional test that can help you lone wolf types. <laughs> <laughs> like you. For this test, you'll perform a chin tuck with external rotation and lower trap activation. Here's how to do it. Stand with feet approximately 12 inches from the wall, place your lower back flat on the wall, and work the entire spine up to be flat. No, this is your first mobility check for the spine as well as your first check to see if you have good core and pelvic control. Place your head up against the wall and perform a mild to moderate chin tuck. Next, bring the arms to a T position with the elbows bent 90 degrees. Rotate your shoulders and forearms backwards until your forearm and hands are against or near the wall. While maintaining that position, slowly raise your hands straight up. If your forearms and hands start to come off the wall, that's your endpoint for now and your sign that you may have a mobility or strength deficit. After performing that test, what did you feel? If you simply felt tightness in your chest or thoracic spine, you may be getting like a false positive. To avoid that, do some stretching and try and test again. However, if you determine that mobility is not your issue and you're still getting a positive test result, aka the forms and hands come off the wall, you may very well have a strength deficit in the lower traps. So if you struggle with this test, it may be an indicator to work on mobility, external rotation, or lower trap strength. Now, let's be clear, climbing itself will help strengthen the lower traps. But if you're looking to step it up and really keep the shoulders healthy, or if you found out you have weak ass lower traps, here are the best exercises to do. The first is the face pull with the overhead press. This is just a mega exercise. Not only does it work the lower trap, but it also works the external rotators, and it works them in the 90-90 position, which is great for climbers. And you have to go from 90 to about 140 degrees of abduction, so it works the lower trap throughout a wider range of motion. The second one that I recommend is the quadruped shoulder flexion with opposite arm press. This is another great exercise if you're specifically trying to work on improving your overhead strength and stability while triggering both the lower trap and serratus anterior. This one's on my list because it has great EMG research that supports it. This exercise can be done with little to no weight and you can definitely increase the weight as you feel stronger. There are two ways to progress this exercise. One, it can simply be done with adding weight, or two, you can get more focus on the serratus anterior and core. In order to do that, simply lift the knees off the ground, focusing the pressure into the toes, which is gonna make a huge change in the amount of core engagement you need, and it's gonna put more pressure in the, the hand that's on the ground, which makes this a very challenging exercise. Finally, the third is the classic D2 flexion. This is a solid exercise that can be done on the go. You can do this as part of your warm up for climbing to help work on activation of the trapezius muscle, and it's done in an overhead position. This exercise may help improve your motor control and awareness, which is especially helpful in the overhead position. We will be releasing another video that has even more great variations, so keep an eye out for that. Now, the question I always get is how do I incorporate this into my training? If doing the D2 flexion as part of your warm up, I would say two sets of about 12 to 15 repetitions is appropriate. If you're looking to strengthen the lower traps and are including the mega face pull activity or the quadruped activity to really get that good activation of the lower trap and serratus anterior, I recommend doing three, possibly four sets with about eight to 12 repetitions. As for frequency, even just adding this into your routine once a week can be helpful, but if you can do it twice a week, it would be even better for your strength training. No more than three times because then you're probably just gonna fatigue those muscles too much. If you're looking to incorporate all three exercises into your routine, say when you're doing like your cross training or antagonistic training, have the D2 flexion be done earlier as more of your warm up. move to the, the quadruped exercise, and then you can kind of finish off with the, the mega face pull because then everything should be nice, active, and warmed up and ready to rock. This climbing drill can be done on multiple levels of difficulty, but I recommend starting on jugs to make it easier. 
That way you can focus on the activation of the muscle and not just if you can hold the grip or not. So step one for this climbing drill is an isometric scapular retraction on the wall. Allow yourself to hang back a little and then tighten the core, squeeze the glutes and engage your shoulder blade down and back to engage the lower trap. Step two, the step up and hold. Next step is to place your foot in an appropriate position and slowly step up and bring yourself to that 90-90 position or lock off position while maintaining the scapular retraction. Hold here briefly, then either switch arms or try step three. Step three, the down climb. See if you can slowly lower yourself back down with good control, essentially reversing the process. You can then repeat steps one and two or keep lowering back down. Step four, the dynamic move. Position yourself safely on good feet and holds, pick your next target and move up quickly with a mild dead point technique and boom, hit the hold, engage like you practiced in step one, go back down and try it again. So one question I get about this sometimes is like, why do I feel neck pain when trying to train the back muscles? Well, oftentimes that is a sign of a compensation of the upper trapezius, which causes this like schneck pain of the shoulder and neck, whereas you're engaging that upper trap rather than controlling it with that mid and lower trap to keep that down. So when you're doing any of these exercises, just try and make sure that you feel it in that mid to lower mid back region and not in the Schneck region. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of the importance of your lower traps and how to train them. I know there are so many things you could be training, but if you have experienced shoulder or neck issues before, this may be well worth your time. And remember to keep an eye out for our other video with a bunch of other great lower trap exercises to help keep things spicy. Until next time, Train those lower traps, climb those mega reachy projects with sensational shoulder control, send it and try and kiss your lower trap to thank it. That's impossible, but keep trying, AKA repeat. It's most important, why am I like so tongue twisted today? I need to like get tongue twisters in the car that I can work <laughs> yeah. on. Now, for those of you who don't have any friends, here's a different test you can do. Yeah, that's the test you would have to do. That's uh, uh, that's true. And me too. Darn oh, me. we don't even have each other. <laughs> <laughs> On screen, off screen. Strictly that's it. Strictly professional. Strictly bro. professional. Keep it professional. <laughs> totally ad libbed that last part. <sighs> no, I see it. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I gotta go pee. <laughs> Dude, say something cool so they like the videos and subscribe for more awesome content. Um, like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. So lame, dude. So lame. I thought it was pretty good.